Hello, and welcome to the SANA site Behind the Scan webinar. Today's webinar will be the examination of the posterior ankle using point of care ultrasound. Um, this is the second of a four part series that we're currently doing on ankle ultrasound. And we'd love it if you could join us for both a third and fourth part of the series of, uh, of these ankle webinars. The next one will be Tuesday, September 27th, and that will cover the medial ankle. And then lastly, we'll wrap up the series on October 11th with the ultrasound evaluation of the lateral ankle. So with all of that out of the way, let's get started with today's presentation. Uh, my name is Jody Miller, and I'll be your moderator for today's webinar. Before we begin, please be advised that all attendees are muted and you may type your questions into the Q&A box in the toolbar that is located at either the bottom or the side of your screen. Um, we will conduct a Q&A session at the end of the presentation and at the end of the live demonstration. Um, just please also be advised that this webinar is being recorded and will be archived for future reference on our webinars page. So to get us started, I'd like to introduce um, our speaker for today. Um, our speaker is Daniel Shelton. Daniel is the Director of uh, Musculoskeletal Market Development for Fujifilm Sonocyte. Daniel has spent 18 years as a dedicated musculoskeletal sonographer, and 12 of those have been here at Sonocyte. He now leads musculoskeletal market development, where he works to spread the word about the benefits of point-of-care ultrasound. Daniel has, a, has a, a lot of great info to share with you today, so I'll hand it over to Daniel, and Daniel will take it away from here. Thanks very much. Thank you, Jody, for that introduction, and welcome everybody to the ultrasound of the posterior ankle. So again, I'll go over these indications from the AIUM, which is where we're keeping our protocol based, um, not just for the anterior ankle, which we just did, but um, now the posterior medial and lateral. But typically in ankle ultrasound, we're looking for focal abnormalities such as plantar fasciitis, plantar fibromatosis, Morton's neuroma, or Morton neuroma, sorry, ganglion cysts, tenosynovial giant cell tumors, ligament and tendon ruptures, ten um, tendinosis, tenosynovitis, joint effusion, and nerve pathology. So those are the indications that we typically look for uh, by the AIUM. As you can see, last webinar we covered the anterior, and these grayed out structures are what were in the AIUM protocol, and we went ahead and covered those. Today we're going to cover the posterior ankle and these structures, which is a pretty simplified list when compared to last time. And then you'll really want to catch the medial and lateral um, ankle because I will say, as fun as it is to look in an Achilles tendon or a plantar fascia, uh, I find that most of the really exciting ankle pathology comes in the uh, the deltoid ligament complex, which is really fun and difficult to view if you haven't had anybody show you any scanning tips or tricks. And uh, these other flexor tendons are also a big deal, and the tibial nerve is a big deal. Um, and then laterally, not just the perineus brevis and longus tendons, but how to scan them to, the, to their distal and thesis is, uh, is often not taught. And uh, we're, we're going to be checking out some of these other ligaments, such as the calcaneal fib fibular ligament. But today we're going to cover the Achilles tendon, the plantaris tendon. There's a little asterisk there because it is anatomically variable. Uh, retrocalcaneal bursa, the retro Achilles bursa, and then the plantar fascia. We'll go ahead and get started. Here's some reference points for you to go back and check out the bones. Uh, you're familiar with the lateral view that we had at the last webinar. Here's the posterior aspect of this, uh, the ankle joint. And here we've got the posterior tibia, fibula, talus, and calcaneus. So not a lot has changed in terms of the joints that we're going to be looking for, uh, but we're primarily going to be focused on the calcaneal insertion for this portion. The Achilles tendon, its origin is the medial and lateral head of the gastrocnemius and soleus muscles. They converge down to become the Achilles tendon. The insertion is on the posterior calcaneal tubercle. The function is plantar flexion of the foot, and it's the largest and strongest tendon of the body. It is also the most ruptured tendon. Uh, it does not have a tendon sheath, but it does have a peritinon, so keep that in mind. So we're looking at this insertion right here across the uh, calcaneal tubercle primarily, and um, here's the CT slice. So we've taken a 3D CT and also the mid-sagittal section just to give you an idea of what's going on soft tissue-wise under this. Achilles. So here we have the calcaneal tubercle in blue, and then we have the Achilles tendon. Um, number four up here kind of out of the shot is the soleus muscle. It's just this little tip of gray that you see here, but you can see how high up that Kager's fat complex can go. 
Uh, number five is the flexor hallucis longus muscle. And in the live demo, you'll see a really cool way to visualize that by wiggling the big toe. Zero down to the insertion. There's a couple more things to look at. So on top of the actual anthesis of the Achilles tendon here at the calcaneal tubercle, we've got the retro Achilles bursa and the um, retro calcaneal bursa to look for. I will usually see a retro calcaneal bursal interface on most people, especially now that the Sonocyte PX and the Sonocyte LX have a 19 megahertz transducer. Uh, it's very easy to see a normal uh, retro calcaneal bursa, but I will say a retro Achilles bursa I typically don't see unless pathology is there. So I'll see the, the bursal interface of uh, number one here, retro calcaneal, but I won't always see a retro Achilles bursa. So just keep that in mind. If you do see a retro calcaneal bursa, look for the normal pathology, things like thickening, debris, um, solid uh, viscous uh, fluid inside, things like that. But just to see an interface with some fluid in it is pretty normal. So here's a breakdown of where the transducer would be, just right over the Achilles. I would say what you're noticing at the top of the screen here is a lot of gel. So we will use a gel heap when we go to the live scan. And then the, uh, the breakdown of anatomy, you can see the beam goes through the Achilles tendon extremely superficially right under the skin. And then it inserts to the calcaneal tubercle, which is this asterisk here. And then don't forget about the deeper structures like the joint, while not mentioned in the AIUM protocols, um, we, we should still go over the anatomy. So here's an MRI correlation, mid-sagittal view. And you can see the, the tendon here, this, this dark um, area representing um, an area of no moisture on an MRI. So that's why tendons are black, inserting to the calcaneal tubercle. And you can see the cortex. If you're not familiar with reading MRIs, the cortex here is this black line and there's no moisture in that either. So we see varying shades of gray depending on how much moisture is in the tissue. And then uh, deep to that is Kager's fat pad, this very bright and, and fat's very oil dense. So it responds very well on MRI because there's a lot of moisture. It's closer to fluid than something like uh, bone marrow, for example. And then deep to that is the flexor hallucis longus muscle that we talked about. Just wiggle the big toe. If you want to see that, not imaged here, soleus is out of view but it just goes to show just how proximal that fat pad really does go. Then we have the posterior tibia, talus, and calcaneus. And then, so this is a proper articulation of a posterior subtalar joint, which we won't be covering today um, with the AIUM protocol. So we're just gonna stick to the Achilles tendon here. We don't see the uh, retrocalcaneal bursa in the MRI or a retro Achilles bursa, but uh, those are the structures that we're gonna be covering. Plantaris tendon. So if you scan an Achilles tendon and you not come across a plantaris tendon, don't get too frustrated because it's um, it's very hard to see unless something's wrong with the Achilles, for example. The swelling can offset the the characteristics that are imaged of a plantaris and make it look really nice. If you rupture an Achilles tendon and you see one one cable hanging on by a thread, medially it is the plantaris tendon um, still able to maybe. Um, uh, mimic an intact portion of the Achilles tendon. So plantaris tendon, we're going to trace that proximally. It does uh, insert, um, pardon me, that should say insert on the medial calcaneal tubercle and it will be medial to the Achilles tendon, so it just follows that border and it does kind of climb underneath it as we go more proximally and it rests superficial to the soleus muscle. So you can follow this little thin cord down until you see it. We're going to, we're going to watch that here. So watch for the uh, yellow arrow, but here is our, our um, plantaris tendon resting over the soleus muscle before it becomes up more superficially. Medial lateral heads of the gastroc here. So got our arrow and we're going to be looking for this dense little cord and you'll see it come up. Here's the Achilles tendon starting to form as we go distally. So this broad band of a structure, I'm just going to pause it because the video is making me dizzy. Here we go. So this broad structure here is the Achilles forming from the uh, fibro uh, musculotendinous portion of the, the two heads of the gastroc and then climbing up superficially and medially um, you'll get the plantaris tendon. But it starts right over the soleus. Right here is this dense little cord, much easier to see in my opinion when you go more proximally than trying to start at the calcaneal insertion. Kind of like in a hip when you're scanning something like a piriformis for example, it's easier to view the m more musculotendinous portion than it is the distal tendon on the greater trochanter. Um, I find the plantaris is easier to find when you go more proximal. All right, so with that, we're going to get the studio ready for a live demo of that Achilles and the uh, plantaris tendon. Bear with me while we switch over. 
All right, so now we'll get ready for the live scan. Today I've got the Sonosite PX. Uh, primarily we're gonna stick with the L15 to four workhorse uh, transducer for MSK, but periodically we're gonna switch back and forth to the L19.5 um, super awesome high frequency transducer, small footprint gets into those tight spots usually like medial and lateral ankle. It's gonna make a bigger difference. Um, but the detail that we're gonna need for some of the smaller bursa that uh, were described, I think the L19 does a wonderful job, so we're gonna switch back and forth to that. But for a general anatomy survey, the L15-4, to you can't beat it. And um, we'll go ahead and switch over to the cameras here. There we go. Actually, before we get started, since we I know we're gonna be scanning a plantar fascia, um, something I recommend people do is go ahead and put gel on the patient's heel. Um, especially if their heels are really bad and cracked from wearing flip-flops and, and whatnot, you know your patients uh, and how bad their heels get. A big scanning pearl here is if you anticipate a plantar fascia scan that you go ahead and moisturize the heel because uh, moisture is absolutely essential for ultrasound. Um, air is the enemy of ultrasound. You see that in bowel, you see it in lung, but on the skin level, we can't see through those dead skin cells that contain air. So they immediately straight out of the chute, degradate your ultrasound beam and make it extremely weak working with a, a lot less power. So, um, I go ahead and start moisturizing a heel before I even get down there. We're going to go ahead and scan the Achilles tendon, but we're going to let the moisture of the gel sink into the heel. So, um, benefits of joining a webinar like this or getting the scanning tips like that uh, that you might not get out of just looking at uh, slides or attending a meeting. Um, if you have any questions about this stuff in the future, just let us know. But um, that has been a huge lifesaver, especially in older patient populations where their heels are really big and crusty. But we'll switch over to the um, live scan now, the Achilles. All right, so we have the L15-4 queued up, ready to go. I wrap the cord around my wrist like this to take a lot of weight off. Because of this kind of bowstring effect on the Achilles, you either really need to flatten it out, uh, the foot that is, and, and tighten it. Most people hang the foot off the bed, but for the camera today, I just did a bolster here. But you need to add a lot of gel. So when you're using a lot of gel, just like any other small part, like the wrist or the, the anterior ankle, as I've shown before, the elbow, I hang a finger down the side of the probe to act like a stilt so I don't compress all the gel. So you'll see my finger go down first on the calcaneal tubercle and I'm just gonna lay the transducer flat. Let me hit unfreeze here. Um, there we are, right across that calcaneal tubercle. So that looks like it's coming across okay. I'm gonna reduce a lot of my far field gain. There we go. Actually, I'm going to just hit auto. So auto gain does a good job, gain up just a little bit. And let's start pointing out some structures. So I'm going to bring my, my arrow up. Okay, got the arrow up now. So here's the enthesis right here. This is the insertional Achilles. And you can see this rounded part here, that's not insertional. It starts right here at the, uh, the flat area. So this rounded part doesn't have any insertion. In fact, that is the interface. We'll see that um, retrocalcaneal bursa right here. We'll switch over to the L19 to show that. And then the retro Achilles bursa, I don't see so much, but let's follow the body of the Achilles tendon. So here we've got Achilles tendon going to the insertion, maybe a couple little flecks of bone spurs starting to show up right here. See these little high level echoes, they're not shadowing yet, so they're pretty early on, and uh, maybe one day they'll grow into a spur, but that is the typical spot where we look for a spur. Um, but since it's not shadowing, it's not gonna show up on plain radiograph either. But um, typically, you can see the gross anatomy in long axis just fine. So what I'm doing is just climbing up the body of the Achilles, I am hanging a finger down the side and it will ride the inside of the Achilles kind of like a track. It makes it a lot easier to scan. So Achilles tendon, let's just follow it up until it tapers to a really, really thin edge. And notice how nice and parallel the fibers are. So now I'm gonna go back to distal. Here we go. And just notice how I don't see any 
outer belly shape of the Achilles. It, it's not turning into like a snake that's uh, swallowed an egg or something. These, these fibers are relatively parallel and healthy. Okay, there we go. So we might just see a little bit of bellying out here, uh, but we are ultrasounding an active runner, so I expect to see some Achilles swelling here and there. So deep to that, we see this, this unorganized area, this fat pad, this is Kager's fat, and it is pretty deep. It's a big triangular wedge, and it does track out proximally and start to lower underneath the soleus and above the flexor hallucis longus. So I know this is the soleus because I can trace it back pretty easy, but how do I know this is the FHL? So I could, I could increase my depth and shoot a little deeper. I'd like to see the tibia back there. Here we go, really nice tibia. On a lot of your patients, um, they may be a lot larger. So if you're not seeing the tibia really nice, switch over to gen mode. And I'm going to hit gen just by dropping my frequency, and it should really brighten the tissues in the far field. Now what I'm going to do is just wiggle the big toe and isolate the FHL. Here we go. So all I'm doing is just um, flexing and, and extending the big toe and showing that that is the FHL writing all the way up until the posterior tibio tailor joint where it takes a sharp dive medially into the tarsal tunnel. But you can catch fluid collections climbing all the way up into this area too. So uh, very important to scan distally, approximately looking for space occupying masses like fluid collections or cysts. Uh, but that's definitely about as far as you need to go. Just pointing out the anatomy again. Soleus, FHL. Let's go over our, our skeletal references that we did on the lecture there was uh, the posterior tibia, posterior talus, and then the calcaneus. That's where that joint is right there. But you see the air gap. That's why it's so important to have all that gel. So if your image is ever bad, the cure in ultrasound is always to add gel. And then we're going to shoot through the gel like that. And then it should allow me to bridge that air gap and allow me to evaluate this all the way down to that little leafy joint capsule. How nice is that, right? So I'm going to increase my far field gain by going to TGC. And just open that zone down at the bottom of uh, gain. So I can, I can see that there's no ganglion cyst fluid collection. There's no um, extra bony abnormalities in the area like ostrogonum. Everything looks pretty good. I'd go to short axis at this point. And this is where I will say short axis, um, grabbing the smaller transducer is typically necessary. But come down here to the calcaneal tubercle. You can see those little spurs in cross section now, just like we expect. Little spurs here. And then we're going to keep following using anisotropy to our advantage. So what is Achilles and what's not Achilles? You just tilt the transducer back forth, back forth, go distal, or sorry, proximal, tilt the probe. Again, healthy tendon will turn dark. Disease tendon will stay bright. So if half of this tendon stays bright and is looking unorganized and you don't see fibers, then you're, you're probably dealing with uh, some sort of tendinosis or old degenerative change like a scar. But um, So let's follow this Achilles. As it turns into an oval, it kicks off this muscle belly right here. And the muscle belly is, is spilling laterally a little bit, and that's the soleus. And we can keep following the soleus, and then it turns into a full muscle belly. Here's that underlying FHL, which I can isolate with the big toe again. So there I'm just getting that same muscle to move and going proximally, proximally, proximally. So as we, as we saw in the lecture, we're going to be looking for a plantaris tendon. And I look for those... Um, I look for their borders medially. I come down to the calcaneal tubercle just for an obvious one, and I don't see an obvious one here, maybe right there. But I find it easier if you just follow this edge. Here's the soleus. So I expect to see plantaris drop in this zone at some point, right? So we're just following this corner right here, the medial corner of the uh, Achilles. And then here we see a septum start to form right there on that belly. So let's follow this septum right here. And it should drop an oval tendon. And this is where angle dependency really matters. Stay medial. Here we go. There's the tendon right there. See that little oval tendon? Now let's go distally, distally, distally. And just keep following 
that very, very thin little tendon right there. Again, there's nothing wrong with it, so it's not popping out at us. But this is the plantaris. And it rides on top of the soleus, under the medial gastroc primarily, stays pretty midline. And we could trace it all the way up, way out of the camera, but it will eventually fall on the lateral proximal condyle of the femur, um, just proximal to the popliteus, if you feel like uh, chasing it up that way. Uh, but that's pretty much it. We're following Achilles, short axis, long axis, couple of dynamic maneuvers you can do. And then uh, for those bursa, I did mention that we could see very nicely on the L19 transducer. So let's switch over to the L19. So again, 19 to five megahertz. We're gonna float a little bit of gel, bring my depth up a little bit more shallow, wrap the cord around my wrist, floating that gel. Let's take a look and see if we can find that bursal interface I was talking about. There it is. Turn the gain up a little bit, depth down, grab my arrow, right there. Normal bursal interface of the retrocalcaneal bursa. It will ride on the rounded portion of the uh, calcaneal tubercle. Actually, we're not quite to the tubercle yet until we hit this flat inflection point. Like any tuberosity, just like we talked about on the anterior ankle, on um, the ATFL insertion, or the supraspinatus, or the lateral epicondyle, we see these flat ridges, these tubercles or tuberosities or epicondyles, those flat surfaces are where everything inserts. So see the round surface here, no insertion, but we see a little bit of normal Kager's fat pad herniating into this, um, this area here where the bursa is, but I can use my finger over here and poke and get that fat to move freely and further show where the bursa begins and ends. If you felt the need to inject one of those. Retro Achilles. Again, I never see those until there's something wrong. So I don't expect to see a retro Achilles interface, really. Um, but you could try a few dynamic maneuvers like rocking the transducer forward and backward on a lot of structures in the body will, will cause the subcutaneous fat to roll over the area of interest. And I just, again, I'm not seeing anything impressive to look at here, but um, those bone spurs look a lot bigger at 19 megahertz, that's for sure. So 19 megahertz, a little easier to see, define, see if it's shadowing, it's early on, it's not shadowing. So we're not quite to that hard calcium uh, that we'd expect to show up on a radiograph. But uh, here it is in long axis bone spur and short axis bone spur starts to look a lot like little teeth coming off the calcaneus like that. So it could be a pain generator one day, something to keep an eye out for. But We'll switch over um, back to the lecture and get going on our um, plantar fascia study. Okay, so we'll get right to the plantar fascia slides. There's just a couple of slides. This should be fairly quick. But um, per the AIUM protocol, plantar fascia is still considered part of the ankle, so we're going to cover that now. Um, I have people start on the calcaneus as a bony landmark in reference, but this is a primarily a very superficial structure. It is enveloped by a very thick fat pad on the heel, which I'm not showing in illustrations uh, very much here, but um, when we get to the live scan, I'll show you some scanning tips on not only how to prepare the site for ultrasounding dense tissue on the heel and dry skin, but uh, dynamic maneuvers that you can do to offset the soft tissue from the ligament of interest or the fascia that we're looking at here and then um, machine settings that help us image through a thick, dense heel and make a plantar fascia pop more better. Uh, but calcaneal tubercle, looking at the plantar aspect of the foot. Landmarks, as you can see, there's a lot of structures underneath the plantar fascia. Here's the proper plantar fascia in the middle, and that is the, uh, the central cord or the medial or the, the middle cord. But there are three portions of the plantar fascia. They extend from the calcaneal tubercle to the transverse metatarsal ligaments of the toes. So we can see that up in here. Uh, the medial cord is very thin. It's superficial to the abductor halysis muscle. So abductor halysis muscle, all the halysis go to the toe, the big toe. So keep that in mind. If you hear the word halysis in there, it's, it's headed to the big toe for the most part. And then on the uh, flip side of that, we've got digiti minimi, which we had one of those in the wrist, um, just next door to the digitorum also. So that's one way to remember as we keep going um, to the pinky toe, just like the pinky side of the wrist, the digiti minimi is next. But the big guy in the middle is flexor digitorum brevis, and brevis typically means short, right? It, that's not what it means, but that's how we find things um, 
brevis versus longus. If I was looking at perineus brevis, for example, laterally in the ankle, it's a shorter tendon than the perineus longus, which has a longer way to go. Same way in the wrist, uh, when we're looking at the, the um, extensor pollicis brevis versus the extensor pollicis longus, the longus has the longest way to go. So that's one way to remember it. But these brevis ones are shorter. And so while this is a digitorum, just like here, this is extensor digitorum, or sorry, flexor digitorum longus, FDL on the medial ankle right here, which we'll get into on the next webinar. Um, it's a very long tendon all the way up the, the, the posterior tibia, and it climbs down through the tarsal tunnel here, which, which we're not going to get into. And then as you can see, it, it still spans the arch of the foot and spreading out to all five toes. So here we have um, flexor digitorum longus, and then here superficial to that is flexor digitorum brevis. It's a big meteor muscle, uh, mid uh, sagittal to the foot, and that's where the main portion of the plantar fascia is gonna gonna lie. There's a few more structures in here, but we're not gonna mention them, but there are other muscular structures, even superficial to this one, like quadratus uh, plantus here, or quadratus plantae, and, um, and, and we won't be imaging that, but we'll look at it on the live scan. But just know that there's a muscle directly deep to the plantar fascia, and it's not associated uh, with our measurement, although it is a large part of the image. We're looking very superficially here. You can see the probe placements on the extreme medial calcaneus, and I, I, I would like to put in here that we need to be angling in uh, laterally. So you'll place your probe medial to the calcaneus, almost to the point you fall off the calcaneus, and then you'll, you'll um, aim and shoot your probe slightly lateral to get a really nice shot. We'll go over that in the, um, in the live scan. So taking a lateral shot here of the calcaneus in profile, it doesn't take a lot of imagination to know that, you know, here, here we go. This is the calcaneus, calcaneus. Here's the plantar fascia, which is the star of the show. This is that, that middle or central band or cord right here. And we're focused primarily right here where it leaves the calcaneus. And we take this measurement, it needs to be four millimeters um, or less. Um, virtually no, no matter how large the patient, that that size is pretty standard. Uh, also notice how parallel the fibers are. I don't see any focal swelling. I don't see uh, fibers bellying out away from themselves. So it's a nice parallel strand and I don't see any big focal swelling here. So uh, that's one thing to look for. Other, other things that might make it difficult to find the absolute part to measure is if you have a bone spur, if you have a calcaneal heel spur coming off like a big diving board protruding way out, it can make some of these other muscles and and potentially um, other pain generators deep to the plantar fascia kind of hard to see um, but but for today's purpose we have a nice normal um, plantar fascia to look at but here they are in profile and uh, the big deal here is four millimeters is the measurement that we're going for now we'll cut to the live demo and um, after this live demo I will say it will be time to open for question and answer uh, we will not record the Q&A typically and keep those offline, so don't don't uh, be afraid to ask questions. Type them in the chat portal. We'll get them queued up. We'll read them one by one in the order they come, and uh, we can answer any of your questions. All right, so back to the heel, but this time on the bottom side. So we're going to go from the Achilles side and wrap around to the calcaneus. I still have the gel that's been... Uh, working its way into the skin, uh, eliminating all the dry, dead skin from stopping our sound beam straight out of the gates. So we'll go over a few things. Uh, the anatomy is pretty straightforward. I think the most benefit of a, a lesson like this is, is traditionally on how to make the image look as good as it can. Um, most people are tempted to go mid-sagittal when it comes to the heel, and I'll say this from the get-go, start on the medial side of the calcaneus and aim towards the lateral side. So I'll show you mid-sagittal and what that looks like. Let me hit go here. And I see calcaneus, it looks dark, and we'll get to that. But there's not a lot of fascia to look at. So it's very, very thin. But watch what happens when I go medial. Medial, medial, medial. You see the fascia start to bulk up. Let's turn our gain up a little bit. And we're on a dense part of the heel. Okay, all this fat pad is very different than a lot of the traditional fat uh, throughout the body. So the fat pad in the heel, it's pretty neat. You should go uh, check it out in anatomy references, but it's built in stacked columns. So we have these vertically oriented columns of fat coming at our transducer. 
And that alone is enough to make the ultrasound beam act a little bit funny. So um, because of the orientation of those fat cells being so different than the rest of the subcutaneous fat in the body, it already makes it hard to penetrate um, on an even normal heel. So today we have a normal heel. So let's go through a few other uh, imaging parameters that we can change. So one of the ones that I am going to change, and we already talked about a little bit, was going to gin mode. So I'm just going to drop the frequency and hit gin, and that immediately has a, a great effect. I can see, um, I can see this uh, neck of the calcaneus much better. I can see flexor digitorum brevis a lot better. I can see quadratus plantae down here a lot better. Um, everything comes into full view really, really nice. But again, if I'm over the mid-sagittal calcaneus, you get this kind of frustrating, where's the fascia image, kind of gone. Um, and that's because you're somewhere between the lateral cord, which we talked about briefly, which is here, and I'm just orienting the probe to the base of the fifth metatarsal. So there's the lateral cord of the plantar fascia. Now we're mid-sagittal to the heel, and we're somewhere in between. So there is some fascia there. It is an aponeurosis. It does kind of spider web across to the rest of the main plantar fascia, but now I'm just going to keep working my way to the medial calcaneal tubercle where we get this very large hump in the calcaneus and then we get this very, very good looking plantar fascia. So um, keep panning medially until you fall off of that part and we can get over here to the, to the uh, medial cord, not the middle cord or central cord. So here we're over the central cord or middle and then extremely medial and thinner and pointed to the to the first metatarsal area would be your uh, medial cord which we don't really image that often so i'm just going to stick to the middle or central cord the most another thing we can do to make the image have a little bit more punch and take advantage of that primary kind of fundamental frequency is take off thi so on the sonocyte px i'm just going to go down to more controls and uh, scroll down and let's see what happens when I turn off THI. So the tissue harmonic imaging is really taking a lot of advantage of our um, reflective echoes coming back to the transducer giving us a, a higher quality image but it does it's, it's not a super strong beam so I'm gonna go turn off THI and turn up the gain a little bit and we'll get a, a bit more of a fundamental more primary beam. Now it it is kind of an uglier image, but it is something you can try if you have some difficult anatomy. But I think for today's patient, uh, we had great anatomy, no need to do that. So we'll turn THI back on, turn the gain back down a little bit. Other things you can do is change your dynamic range a little bit. Go down and to a negative zone of dynamic range. Right now I'm at negative three, I'm going to go to negative two. And then if you're still not delineating those margins of the plantar fascia with confidence, let's, let's do some dynamic maneuvers. So first thing, I'm going to rock the transducer, teeter-totter it, and I can see the subcutaneous fat and that fat pad of the heel roll over the plantar fascia margin right there. So that's one way. Another way is to go cross-sectionally here, so we'll just rotate the probe. Left side of the screen is medial, and we'll go up here to the calcaneus. So here we're on the calcaneal tubercle. And remember what I said about the Achilles tendon where the, the healthy fibers will turn dark to the anisotropic artifact, and that's what's happening here. So I'm just going to walk the probe down the heel, rock as we go, keep rocking, and I'm just using the anisotropic artifact to my advantage. And here's that flexor digitorum brevis right underneath, so you can see it's muscle mass right here really nicely. And then here's the, the main plantar fascia still. So plantar fascia starts to widen out superficially it's all of this guy up here and if we haven't seen any fibromas or fibr fibromatoma or any thickening at that point we'll head back up to the calcaneal tubercle where we look for things like spurs fluid collections tears you can also compress or even use your finger laterally immediately so here's a lateral push to get that uh, fat to show itself and to show the margins of where the plantar fascia begins and ends, or medially. So what I do is I just take my fingers on each side and I roll back and forth and get that fat to glide over the fascia right there. So you can see the interface where the arrow is. 
and all I'm doing is just using that mobile fat pad to delineate the margins of where fascia begins and ends and I can keep doing that as I go distally you can see how a static image wouldn't do this justice all the layers kind of look similar what I'm going to do is just pinch and push back and forth and I can get the fat on top of the fascia to roll and show its margins real nice very easy to do um, when people inject these they typically go from uh, medial in this orientation here and they will uh, pop their needle just under the fascia right here I know it's been described you can um, inject these superficially or deep but it seems like the preference is to go deep and try to envelop the fascia as much as you can and try to keep the steroids out of the fat pad so you don't cause any kind of cavitation down the road all right so as far as finding the margins of that central cord you're staying slightly medial on the calcaneal tubercle using angle artifact to your advantage using the highly mobile superficial overlying fat pad of the heel to uh, to see where the plantar fascia starts and stops all right so with that I think that's safe to conclude our plantar fascia study on that note so I'm just gonna stop my image here oh I didn't go over how to measure it so here we go so what we're gonna do is just find the the thickest portion of that medial calcaneal tubercle portion of the central cord work on our angle until everything's nice and bright okay get it as bright as you can and hit freeze and go to caliper and automatically your um, distance caliper comes up so we're just going to move it right here to this bottom corner and hit select and come right up here where the fascia starts to dive it needs to be less than four millimeters hers is 3.4 millimeters but here's the margin that we're measuring right there so you can see the fascia comes up and then it takes a dive so I wouldn't want to measure here because it's oblique I'd be taking not quite a, a true cross section because it's diving I need the shortest path right there so here we are again so save my shot there and we have that image saved all right well thanks for joining um, the posterior ankle webinar be sure to join us for the medial and lateral coming up and if you have any questions about future webinars or requests just go ahead and email them to uh, to the same um, email address that sent your invitation to the webinar thank you all and have a great day